Hi, I'm Amy Keynes, assistant coach of the Minnesota Swarm, and you're watching today's YBL Tip of the Day, presented by Summit Orthopedics. Today's YBL Tip of the Day is the three on two. I'm joined here by Pat Smith, Evan Kirk, Shane Jackson, Alex Krepensek, Corbin Tao, and Jordan McIntosh. We've split up into offense, defense. The black are gonna be in D, and the gray are gonna be in O. Offensively on a three on two, you really want to have the ball in the middle of the field. As Corbin demonstrates here, he's going to push the ball down the middle of the field. If the defense is playing in uh, a different setup than the eye, which they are now, okay, Corbin has a couple options. If, if they're going to sit back in the hole, Corbin's just going to go in and shoot it. That's his first option. Always when you're the ball carrier on a fast break, your first option is to shoot the ball. If they're playing smart D and they're in the eye, okay, Corbin really wants to carry it until he feels pressure. So he wants to push the ball in until he feels pressure, and then he's going to move it to either side. Once he moves it to the side to Shane, he has now created a two-on-one. So Ch Shane has an option here. If Jordan's slow coming across, he has the first option of shooting. And if Jordan slides across, his second option will be to pass it to Pat Smith. So the slide's there, he makes the pass, and now you have a one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. So now as we move down to the two wingmen on the three on two, Pat really wants to position himself to have a good angle for a shot. If Pat stays back here and stays low, he has a terrible angle on the goalie. He wants to really position himself and see cut up as he's catching this ball to increase his angle for a shot or make that pass across. Shane, on the other hand, wants to get into a passing lane. If Shane stays behind Jordan here, Jordan can knock that pass down. So Shane really wants to open up, call for the ball, and get in a passing lane. So defensively, we really want to play in an eye. We want to create as many passes as possible to give that team the, the most chances to miss a pass or turn the ball over and make a mistake. So we really want to push the ball and make those mistakes. So Krepensek is going to, same as the two-on-one, he's going to hold so he's not too far out, but he really wants to make Corbin make a pass and make a decision. Once he makes him pass, your second slide is going to be Jordan going to the ball. As that happens, the person that slid first, Alec, wants to get back in the hole and cut off that second pass. Once he does that, see the position they're in now? They're back into the original eye. As Krepensek forces that pass, he really wants to open up the right way and get his stick into the passing lane. If he turns his body the other way, his back is against the play and he can't see what's going on. So move it back to Corbin. We'll just go over that in slow motion. Notice how Krepensek opens up, gets his stick in that passing lane and gets back into the eye. Secondly, we're going to talk about the bottom guy. Watch as Jordan watches the ball carry and anticipates where the ball is going to go. As he anticipates, he can get a jump on his opponent. And last thing we're going to talk about is the goaltender. For any good defense, your last line of defense is your goaltender and he should be the one that's speaking the most and letting you know where the ball is. Let's get a knockdown here. Oh. Hey! Back in. <laughs> it's time for another quick tip from Summit Orthopedics, the official orthopedic provider for the Swarm. Hey lacrosse fans, thumbs up. Did you know that thumb injuries and fractures are common for lacrosse? Help avoiding these injuries by taping the tip of your thumb or wearing a small splint to protect from impact. Do you have a question for our Swarm team doc or athletic trainer? Visit Summit Orthopedics Facebook page and post your question. And if you do get injured, go to OrthoQuick, providing walk-in sports injury care seven days a week. If you're experiencing pain or weakness, which is different than just being sore, it's not the time to suck it up and keep playing. When you play through pain, the odds are there's an injury and you're only making it worse and creating more problems for yourself down the road. Listen to pain, modify your activity, and if it persists, get checked out by your trainer. Be smart about this. Take care of any injury right away so you can get back as soon and as safely as possible and avoid creating a long-term problem.